Video one explained the basic sweater design. Video two showed you how to adjust your numbers if you were unable to perfectly match the gauge. So now let's get on with knitting the sweater back. I am giving the needle count and row count based on the idea that you did perfectly match four stitches, six rows per inch. If you did not, review video two. I'll be making loosely knitted knit two purl one ribbing to create a fresh look for this otherwise very basic design. But you may choose your own hem. Here's an example of knit one purl one ribbing worked at a tighter stitch size than the main knitting in the same shape of sweater. This one is from my Made for Mid Gauge book. To get this look, you would knit 18 rows of ribbing at two to three stitch sizes smaller than the main knitting. Here's another example of the same look from Made for Mid Gauge. And here is one from my Mostly Classic Cables book. These are all about a three inch depth of ribbing on an adult sweater. You'll be seeing me create ribbing manually by laddering down and reforming stitches, but of course it may also be done with your river. The easiest option is probably this one, a rolled hem. This picture is of a standard gauge sweater from my personal best book. It's the most casual sweater in this book. For the gauge we're working in, you would achieve it by knitting 12 rows at two to three whole numbers smaller than the main knitting, and that's all, not reforming anything. Yet another option is the hung hem pictured here. This sweater is from my Mostly Classic Cables book. To get it in the gauge and sweater we're working on, I suggest a two inch long hem. That will require 24 rows worked after the cast on at main stitch size minus one then hanging the cast on on the same needles and continuing the sweater from there. It is certainly possible to cast on and knit directly, but I strongly suggest casting on in waste yarn and hanging your weights and combs, whatever it is you need for your machine, in the waste yarn. Besides keeping the combs out of the main yarn, it will give us something to hold on to when we manually work our ribbon. I'm demonstrating a super easy way to do it. Every other needle in work, knit across, hang the comb, place the remaining needles in work, knit across, and now everything has a stitch on it. It's a hideous cast on, but it's only our waist yarn. And if anything failed to pick up and knit properly, which mine did because I didn't have my needles perfectly aligned, you can fix it by hand as you just saw me do and proceed until every needle across the correct span has a stitch in work. 94 stitches are actually needed for the garment. So why did I say 94 to five? Because for this version of ribbing, I need a multiple of three plus two stitches and 95 accomplishes that. No need to do that for either the hung hem or the rolled hem. For knit one purl one ribbing, it's a judgment call. You can certainly just cast on and use the 94, but many people like to begin and end the ribbing with a knit stitch, and 95 will do that. Doing so does make seaming the ribbing a bit easier, and we will get rid of the spare stitch as soon as we're done with the ribbing. You may use your choice of cast on, but I favor the chain stitch cast on. Bring all the needles forward, and with the main yarn, chain stitch loosely around the needle shanks. Loosely is because the machine is going to need to knit through the stitches that you make. And if you over tighten them, it's going to have trouble doing that. Work from left to right and then thread the main yarn from the last stitch into the carriage. An optional step would have been to knit one row of ravel cord between the waist yard and the cast on. If you need more help with cast-ons, I have complete movies on the subject. Knit 24 rows at main stitch size. All the ribbing rows for the hem are now complete, but we need to form the ribbing. Every third stitch using my kind of ribbing, knit two purl one, 
is the one we dropped. So count over from the last purl column. One, two, three. Now I should be able to read down the column of stitches and find the true stitch at the bottom and ravel down. Personally, I like to find the first stitch that knitted main yarn through main yarn. So this is the stitch that knitted through the cast on, but the next one is the first one that knitted a stitch through a stitch in the main yarn. And with the um, tool in that stitch, you see how easy it is to ladder down. And now just chain back up and we'll hang it on the original needle. You would be doing the same exact thing here if knitting knit one purl one rib. There would be a couple of differences. Obviously you would drop and ladder down every other stitch. I split that stitch, that's what you're seeing there. I felt it hang up and I want it nice and clean. The other difference between knit one purl one and this is that usually my stitches would be tighter, so my ladder would be a little smaller, because this is designed to stop the edge roll and make a hem, but not pull in. Whereas knit one purl one, we're usually wanting it to pull in. And we repeat in this manner all the way across the work. I'm ready to do the last of the laddering down. And here is the reason that we added a stitch to the pattern so that I would finish with two knit stitches after the last purl in the same way that we began. Latch it back up normally. And when you latch back up, that's making chain stitches, pulling one rung through the next. And we hang it on the original needle. So now we have created a ribbed hem. There it is. Now, we don't want to keep the spare stitch, and we don't want to make it difficult to seam. So I'll use a full-fashioned decrease, get rid of the extra stitch, but there will still be a continuous column available for seaming. Set row counter to zero now. If you used a smaller stitch size for the ribbing, now is the time to go to the garment stitch size and knit 84 rows, which will take us to the underarm. When row 84 is completed, or the row that you've decided on, hang a yarn marker on each end needle. This will get caught in the next stitch, but it won't really be part of the knitting and we'll be able to pull it out later. This will help us find the armhole when we need it. Here's the yarn marker getting knitted in, but clearly not part of the real knitting. It'll pull straight out. Continue knitting until 146 rows since the hem have been knitted. There is no back neckline shaping, but the center 38 stitches will become the back neck. So place a yarn marker on the 19th stitch from the center left and the 19th right to mark them off. The sweater back is complete. Bind off using any method that you like. I'm using the transfer bind off, showing you first with a tool and then with a fingertip method. It is also okay to scrap off if you prefer to join your pieces from live stitches. This is the way I prefer it, so that's what I'm demonstrating. I used the fact that there is a bind off to strengthen and stabilize the shoulder seams. 